another video today we did the striking one and now we're going through the kicking video I want to emphasize on you uh, or to you that in a real fighting situation or when you're trying to get out of you're trying to escape someone's attacked you or trying to attack you I, I wouldn't use kicks unless you practice and you're good at it uh, trying to kick too high or not knowing how to kick you can lose your balance and fall you can have your leg caught and hurt. You can miss again and, and walk into a punch. So once you've practiced kicks, they're an excellent tool in sparring and fighting and uh, defending yourself against multiple opponents. But it does take some practice and it takes some technique to be good at it. So with that being said, we're gonna start with the pipe kick. Again, my son Jackson is here to help me in this video. Since we are social distancing and we can't be with each other in class, uh, we're trying to learn uh, remote. Our first kick is called a tight kick. A uh, tight kick is a lower leg kick. It doesn't. This is the one that you don't have to practice much. It doesn't take athleticism to do this one. And it's really great when you have shoes on. And here we'll be practicing it with our toes pointed up so that when we hit the, the, the bag, uh, that we're not gonna hurt our toes. But if you have boots on or hard sole shoes, you can kick straight into the leg. Uh, if you have tennis shoes on, you can turn your foot with your pipe kick. Uh, but again, it's lower, lower it's from the bottom of the knees uh, to the top of the ankle. Right in the middle of the shin is probably the best target. So the pipe kick, just come up here, you're gonna do something real slow. It would be like this person has gotten into my space and he's maybe he's bigger than me and I want to bend him down, bam, I pike kick. I use my foot to kick him right in the middle of that shin to bend him over so I can run or hit him or use a knee strike or help, whatever I need to do after that point. And like me being 6'2", if you had a guy 6'2", 6'4", 6'7", I've sparred a guy 6'7", before. If he's 6'7", and you're 5'10", you need a way to get, bring him down to your level. So I'm taller than Jackson, so if he was to pipe kick one of my legs here, he would probably bend me down into an uppercut or to a headlock, or just bend me down enough where he could take off running if, if that's what the case is. If you had three opponents here, and you're trying to get out of the way, just pipe kick one and give yourself an opening and run. That, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So to practice it, though, the form of it, we're going to do it with a shield, and again, when you're practicing with bare feet, you want to turn your toes up and kick with the ball of your foot. If I had hard sole shoes, I don't worry about it. I'm just going to kick it. Uh, but uh, again, if you were to miss, if you were to kick and miss, control your leg. Don't kick and miss and fall into that elbow, that punch, whatever. So if you kick, control your leg. All right. So Jackson is going to walk these kicks, walk me back diagonally, and then I'm gonna give him the bag and I'll walk him back. And you can show, this is a drill you can practice with your uh, your brother, your sister, your dad, your next door neighbor, if y'all are close and, and uh, you know you need one when you're sick. But what I do is I take this and I'm gonna place it on my shin. He's gonna get into a grappling situation uh, and he's just gonna alternate ways. You can't, you can't, you can't. Kick, 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 kick. Then he would take the bag, and I would go into a head and arm position, and I'm going to kick and walk him back. Now, once you get good at that, you can really go fast. We slowed it down because I didn't want to go too fast. You can see what we're doing. Also, it's not smart to practice that drill. Hold it again. I'm not going to bring it over here. It's not smart to just be up like this doing it because that's not a real fight. I mean, he's going to be doing something. 
He may be pulling a wild punch and, and, and you block it and then kick. Or he grabs you and you re-grab and then use it. So just to be kicking like this is, is an inefficient way to practice. So we grab each other like we had been close quarters and just drive each other. And again, when you're doing that, make sure you're kicking more in the shin. Don't kick your training partner, your neighbor, your brother, your sister in the knee joint. Because again, we want no one ever injured, ever. You cannot train, you can't defend yourself if you're injured. Okay, that is the pike kick. You can do it either leg. You can do that from the lead leg. You can do it from the back leg. You can do it coming back to the lead leg. You can go forward marching like you're marching through. Multiple ways you can use it. Does not take a lot of, uh, a lot of balance. Doesn't take a lot of athleticism. Again, might be the most effective kick. Second kick we'll talk about is one that it's used in every karate style, used in martial arts, used in Muay Thai, is called the front kick. The front kick is similar to the pie kick except it's higher. It's above the knee most of the time. So your, your front kick can be performed with the lead or back leg. So if the lead leg, the, most people call it the front snap, with the back leg, it's, it's more of a front thrust, but I actually like to kind of thrust in either one of them. There are times when I would prefer to snap. If I'm moving backwards, I would snap it, but if I'm moving forward, I would thrust it on the lead leg. On the back leg, it's always going to be a thrust. The back leg is similar to stomping the door in. You're making an opening. You can see it, but it's got more power. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate the lead front and the back front on the dummy, and I'm going to hold it for Jackson. He's going to do it so you can see it do it with partners. So if I don't have a partner, I'll be doing this against the air. I'll be right here and just practicing that kick, practicing that kick. Notice that I extend it, then my knee bring it down. I do not extend it and fall into a punch. Same thing the lead leg. I'm not here stomping like a horse. It's here, bring it back down. It could be to the groin. It could be to the solar plexus. If you're good enough, it could be to the neck or face. You have to practice that though. Never throw those high kicks unless you're absolutely sure you can do it because it puts you in a bad position. So if I want to hit the dummy right here, to throw the front, the lead front, you have to be close enough to jab. If I cannot jab, I cannot kick it. I have to be in jabbing position, and then I can kick it. If I'm in jabbing position, I don't want to use my back leg, because it's not going to work. I could knee, but I couldn't go the front kick. So if I'm out of my jab position, now this tells me, okay, I can't use my front leg, but I can use my back leg. Okay, so you have to know distance. So when I hold it for Jackson, he's going to do three lead legs with the left, three with the right. One, two, four hips, three, right there. See, there's a lot of thrust in that lead leg. Switch your feet, opposite leg. One, two, nice kick, three. You, you can see he's got a little aggression in here today. He ate his wings this morning. All right. Now, going back to his regular stance, now he's going to use the back leg. This is one that I've kicked so hard before and had somebody out super big holding the bag, I've knocked him over. I've been knocked over. I've been actually knocked off my feet when someone's kicking so hard. So hopefully he doesn't do that to me today. Uh, but this is a demonstration of using the front kick with the back leg or the front thrust kick. Good, good, good. Opposite leg. So you can see a front kick has a little power in it. But again, don't use it if you're not good at it. Uh, don't try to go too high. If you go too high, he throws the front kick high, like to my head here, and I, I can get out of the way, I can knock it over, some people will catch it, uh, and right when it's too high, he throws it, it's too high, and I get around it, or I catch it, then I've got an advantage. So, if you slip, 
I have slipped practicing before. Been sweaty, the sweat gets on the floor, I go to a kick and I slip. So in the proper situation, in the right situation, and using the proper kick, kicks are great. Okay, the round kick, which is the probably that I call the universal kick, because I've seen every style use a round kick. I've seen people who've never kicked before just get mad and, and they just go a, a, a kind of a offshoot of a real round kick. So the round kick is what it says, you're coming around your opponent with your kick. You're utilizing the shin part. If I go just with my foot, you've got a chance of injuring your foot and you never want to round kick with your knee. You're gonna use your knee, you might as well use a, a knee. Because if I round kick with my knee, my foot wraps around and it hyper extends the knee joint. So I want to use the round kick to attack his thigh, attack his ribs, attack his head only if I'm good enough. Or if he's short, if he's really short, you know, and I get there fine, but mostly it's gonna be to the leg. So I would mostly use the round kick to the leg. And you don't wanna straighten your leg out before it makes contact. You don't want to, because there's nothing in there. So I, I'm going, as I'm coming in, I'm gonna either step or twist at an angle. And as I'm coming in, my knee stays cocked and I hit it and bring my knee back. I'm going to flick that back. I don't want to do this. Fall into kick. That's not smart. So again, my round kick, I'm using my right leg in my normal final stance right here. Right there. Notice that knee comes, comes back here. I don't want to leave it hung. Leave back and back around. I can use my lead leg for a round kick, but it's more of like a jab and punching. It's not a knockout. So I can use my lead leg as a slap or a jab uh, on somebody a little, I'm not gonna hit you, just gonna be up there. Come over here. So this is a lead leg round kick and the other hand, yeah. Where I'm using just that, slap me. I don't use those in real, in real sparring anymore. When I was young, I did, now I wouldn't. I would spar only legs from here down, ribs down. Uh, because again, he can catch my leg if I'm slow with him. If he catches my leg, I'm all extended, you're growing, you get hurt, hamstrings pulled, uh, anything can happen. So in self-defense, I would, in kickboxing, I would train, it's fun, it, it, it's good, and it, it, it's regulated, but self-defense is not your best kick. So remember when you're going into that kick, you're gonna turn or step. Bring your knee up, kick, bring it back, and back down. I'm gonna get the back, and I'm gonna have Jackson demonstrate three on his, with his right leg and three with his left leg. When I hold this bag, I'm gonna hold it tight to my body here, and I'm gonna tell him what height he wants so he'll know. In fact, we're gonna do six kicks. So the first two is gonna be more of what if he was trying to attack my leg, he's attacking my leg, so I'm holding the back for him right here. Right there, attacking the leg. Now ribs, see how hard that is? Now just two higher, like he's going to the head. Head shot, head shot. Again, that's a pretty good head kick, but there's risk involved with that. Other leg, to the thigh. Good, good, good. A little bit higher. And good. So that's a good demonstration of a round kick. Uh, when I first learned the round kick, and I was living in an apartment I didn't have, other than at the dojo, I didn't have anywhere to practice it. I actually went out and found a little field, found some trees that were kind of thin and had some give to them, and I used to put markers on that and use my round kick on that. Uh, I've also uh, used, uh, oh, what, what would I call it, kind of a, a, a I, I built kind of a tower with, pillows and blankets and stuff and just kick soft against that until I was able to get a hang up bag where I could really kick it hard. I also kicked air and I would walk and kick air. So I would walk that front kick 
or I would walk that round kick and kick air with, and control my legs. So there's many ways to practice. Practicing this air and control is probably the best way to start. And then you want to get where you're making contact. So you've never made contact, you don't know what that feels like. So you have to learn to make contact. So that is your, your round kick. Uh, and I basically use the, the back leg on that, not so much the front. And that's it on the round kick. So our next kick is called the side kick. Side kick is done with your lead leg unless you're doing a spinning side, which I don't recommend. Again, unless you're a really high level uh, martial artist, I wouldn't recommend the spin on, just do the traditional. So the side kick is, again, if I'm close enough to jab, you're not going to use the side kick. I have to be out of jab range. And when I'm using the side kick, now, when you get really good at it, you can be close to jab range and just go into that side kick. But that takes some practice, so I recommend that you get a little bit further away and you take one step behind your front leg. Take a sweep of step behind your front leg, bring the lead leg up, and then the side kick into your, your target. I'm getting old losing my balance. So right here, and jam that side kick in. You want to really kick with the side of your foot and the bottom of your foot. Don't get your let your foot turned the wrong way because it can hurt your ankle. So it's with the, the back side and the bottom of the foot where you're making contact. Again, a great place to put that is right here in the, in the belly, in the liver, in the lower rib cage. Uh, when you're really stretched out and you got long legs, you might go to the neck or head with it. But again, everything above here is a little bit more risky. So, Jackson, if you'd like, go ahead and demonstrate a couple on, on the dummy here. Let's follow through with it a little. There you go. Try the other leg. There you go. Good. Good side kick. Okay, An another drill with the side kick. You can do it on a bag or a dummy. You can also have a partner, training partner, that's holding the bag. And... He's just gonna step into that side kick. And again, if he kicks that hard, it's gonna knock you back. Because you'll feel that. And don't try to jam his leg. Go with it like I am. Just go, go, with, the, go with the motion, the movement, the energy. That way, uh, neither one of you get hurt when you're training. Okay, so that is the side kick. The back kick is Real similar to the side kick. The only difference is that you rotate your hips and your tailbone more towards your opponent and you use more of the heel than the side or the bottom that you use more of the heel. And again, I like stepping behind or spinning into it. So again, I'm not gonna use a back kick right here. If I'm this close to you, I'm in here throwing punches, I'm throwing knee strikes right here, you know, little pipe kicks, little round kicks. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to throw my back kick from, from here because it's too tight. So I want to be a little further at arm's length away. You have to learn your own distance and I'm going to step behind just like that. I'll sweep behind and actually turn my butt towards my opponent, but I won't take my eyes off it. I don't ever want to kick like this. I'll always see my opponent drive that heel into it. Again, a real good back kick into that rib area, into the pelvis is devastating. You have to also raise your knee and rotate it. Don't raise it up like this, because this is just a, kind of a terrible kick there. So when I step here, I see my opponent, I step and tuck that knee like this. So I step, tuck the knee, extend the kick. And that is your back kick. Uh, you can, while I'm doing it, I, I've got in here, we're gonna do a few spin kick, couple spin kicks, but that same kick you can do in a spinning position. You're right here, maybe. I'm gonna use that same um, kick. But I'm gonna spin into it. So instead of stepping behind right here, I'm just gonna spin and throw the kick. I wouldn't practice that at all until you got the others down. It's just kind of a, it's a good movie kick. Good for show, 
but on your spin, if you slip or if he's moving at the very split second that you're spinning, he'll get out of your line of vision. But it is a fun kick to practice. Okay. That's probably good enough on the back kicks. We'll go, when we get through here, we'll do a couple of combo kicks and, and then you'll, we'll be done with this. Uh, and never again practice all of them until you've broken each one of them down and gotten a little bit better. Do the pipe kicks and front kicks first, then go to your round kicks, then your sides, then your backs. Uh, you can throw knees in there at any time, and then there's a couple other kicks you like your spins or your presses you get at. All right, your knee strikes. There's basically three knee strikes. There, and, and there could be a flying knee and some other things, but your basic knee strikes are one is your what we call a a uh, curved or round knee, a curved knee, where you're in tight. You curve your knee into your opponent. So you right here in tight with you and you curve, or he grabs you. He grabs you right here. Boom! You're curving that knee right here into his uh, side of the kidney. Bam! Right here. Remember, that is a curved knee. A round knee is like a round kick, but you're tighter. It would be like instead of him using, if I'm here, he could use his round kick on my leg. But if I'm here, and I can use the round knee on my leg. And that knee right here to the outside of that thigh, you'll, you'll, you'll numb that, that thigh and it'll knot up and you can't really raise your leg if you get knee there hard enough. So there's that round knee, the curved knee, and there's the straight knee. And you see that in MMA a lot. You see it in Muay Thai a lot, where they're in here and they're punching, they're trying to straight knee, you're trying to straight knee. In the MMA, like he, he clenches you and brings the knee into you. Right there. And then go ahead again. Then he may turn you and throw the other knee into you. Bam, right here. Bam. And so that is the straight knee. The straight knee is just here, straight into it. Straight. Straight. You can use your hands like you did put as a target. Boom. Straight knee. So I'm right here, straight knee. Boom. I didn't hear my partner. Straight knee. Knees can be used in combos. There's a lot of people who practice. You throw a punch at them, they try to catch you, block your punch, catch you, and bring you into a knee strike. Then they turn, then they turn you, bring you into another knee strike. So just get used to practicing straight knee straight knee and then if you get a bag or a target you know straight knee straight knee then practice grabbing it go curve knee curve knee right into the kidney area the open area curve knee then practice ground knee right in that 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 uh thigh area where unless you've got big thighs there's not a lot of a lot of protection there against all that nerve tissue so that is your knees Again, another great fighting tool is your knee strikes. The crescent kick is one that is pretty good in sparring, get points. Not, I would never use it in a street fight ever or to protect myself, but y'all probably watched Texas Walker Ranger. Chuck Norris is one of his favorite kicks is his, is uh, Walker Texas Rangers. His favorite kick is his crescent. So the crescent kick, yes, yeah, so be my light leg. So your crescent kick is done with the inside or outside blade of the foot. And it's sort of like it comes around, but it comes this crescent motion instead of a round motion. So when it is a kind of a whip or a slap with your leg. So from here, it's a, right there, from here. You can do it with the back leg, do it with the, the, the inside crescent kick instead of the outside. Okay, other hand. Hopefully I don't fall on this. This is a spinning crescent kick. So from here, you can spin, you use your crescent. Again, those are nice moving kicks. It's great for young people, uh, but I, I, I don't practice them to use in a body's practice for fun. They're, they're good kicks for fun. They're good for loosening the hips, uh, stretching the growing hamstrings. So again, it's something fun to practice down the road. If you have a bag or a or a bob like this, you can train that crescent kick on them. 
Uh, otherwise, I, that would be way in the back of my mind as far as your training is concerned. Okay. Combo, we're gonna do just a few combos to help you get started. And then later we'll probably add some more combos where we add hands and feet. But today on the combos, we're going to uh, show you how to do that. And we're gonna walk it without a partner and then get the bag and walk it with a partner. So if you're doing, the first combo is front kick, front kick. So from your fighting stance, go lead front kick to back front kick. Lead front kick to back front kick. And you walk back and forth on your mat or across your garage or even across your yard. Now if you're out there in the yard doing this, you hope that you don't have some old lady and old man and neighbor that thinks you're some kind of nut job. <laughs> you, you, but it's fun to do this outside. I've practiced many a, a times outside. It's a good drill to do. Front kick to front kick. Now notice when I'm doing the combo where my hands are. I'm not bringing my hands down where I'm open on my kicks, I want my hands up so that I protect on my kicks, okay? So, if Jackson and I were doing it, he'd be walking, he'd do his lead leg first, then his back leg. Again, lead leg, back leg, lead leg, back leg. So you can practice with the part, back and forth. Now, we haven't done this in a while with each other, so our timing's off a little bit, but you get the drift that you can, once you do it, and, and, and the way I practice a lot in our class is that we have a lot more mat area, and one person will do it, and then they'll hand the bag to the training partner, and they will get to do it. So everybody gets a lot of kicks in. So if you're training at home, that's a good way to do it. Now, front kick to round kick. So this time, what you're doing is, you're leading with the front kick, and then going into the round kick. This is, everybody does this combination. Front kick, round kick combo. Front kick, round kick combo. So, you learn to walk that, and then you do it with a partner. It does left front, right round. Left front, right round. Left front, right round. So you can walk around, you walk straight, you walk around, and then once you do that, you switch legs. So now he would go right front, just go switch it, you have right leg, yeah. Right front, left round. Right front, left round. And so you learn both sides of the body. So you notice I started here, now he's doing it here, so he's going to the right front into the front front. So you practice both sides. We all have a tendency to practice the side that we feel most comfortable with. Force yourself to practice the side that you're uncomfortable with so that you train both sides of the body. Okay, the next combo is one that it takes a while to get down, but it's one of, again one of my favorites. It's front kick, round kick, side kick. So it is a Front kick with your left leg, round kick with your right leg, round side kick with your right leg. One left, two rights. So again, if you're looking at me here, front kick, round kick, step, side kick. Now that takes timing with your back. So if somebody's doing it and you all are practicing, both of you don't know how to do it or haven't done it before, then it's gonna take you a while to get the timing. So go slow. So I'm gonna, he hasn't done this in a long, long time, so our time is not gonna be great, but this is what we gotta do. So front kick, round kick, side kick. And as on your round, you throw your round kick, just leave it in front soft on your side kick. You have to practice throwing that round, leaving it here, stepping into the side. Not, not an easy kick to do until you've done maybe kick. So front kick, round kick, side kick, right there. And again, you need space. It's a great one to do with a partner, but if you don't have a partner, you can do it alone again. Remember, front kick, you leave that front, round kick, step, Side kick, back to your stance. That's a th three-step combo. 
And the last one on the, on the combos today, again, I've got endless number of combos, but it is what we call a switch kick. So you're going from a right round kick, switch to the left, switch to the right, switch to the left, switch to the right. You have to have a little skip in there. So you throw the right round, put it down, skip, left round, skip back to the right. So you, it's hard to do until you just kind of just flow into it. So round kick, skip, Right, left, right, left. Good. So it's very advantageous when you're here sparring. You throw this right, you're in your punch it. You throw this kick, you switch, I throw this kick, switch, and this kick. You keep your opponent on his heels. So again, that's the switch kick. If you have a bag, you can do it on that bag. Switch those legs. All right, again, I hope this has been very helpful. I hope that, that I've explained these kicks in a manner which you can train them. They're fun, they're great, they're very uh, cardio practice if you're doing a lot of them against uh, in isolation. Uh, so I hope you enjoy them and I hope you're, you understand and make sure that you control yourself, you don't hurt yourself, you keep your hands in a defensive posture so you're not open. Now our quote today, for you again to look up and let me know who stated this quote. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Thank you and we'll see you in the next video.